We are a show that connects East and West. My name is Jason. I'm originally from California, but now I'm living here in beautiful Beijing. Today with me is Bebe. Hello. Hi. Hi, Jason. <laughs> Hello. Finally here in Beijing together. Today with us, we have Dr. Stonier, who is an American living in China. Uh, Dr. Frank Stonier is an associate professor at Southwest University in the School of Curriculum and Instruction. He has been a professional educator for over 20 years. Prior to working in higher education, he was a second grade teacher for public schools for five years. Since that time, he has worked for both American and Chinese universities in faculty positions. He holds a Bachelor's of Science in Psychology and Early Childhood Education, a Master's in Education, a Master's in Business Administration, a PhD in Curriculum and, in, uh, curriculum and Instruction, and a Graduate Certificate in Geographic Information Systems. Welcome to the show, Dr. Frank Stonier. Hi, Dr. Well, hi. Stonier. Well, thank you for having me. The, the reason we're having Frank on today, baby, is mm -hmm. because he is a national hero in China. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I know. Actually, I just want to call him Lao Fu instead of Dr. Stonier. Yeah. Do you know what Lao Fu means? No, I do not. Okay, because um, I've been watching videos of you and also there are like news reports about Dr. Stonier. Mm -hmm. So I feel like mm -hmm. when I you know, finally see him on video, it's like, wow, there's already this sense of fam uh, familiarity. So when you are really familiar with someone, there's kind of like, um, like in, in Chinese, we'll give you a, like a nickname. And Lao Fu, his name is Frank. Frank mm. Fu Lang Ke. Mm. And then Lao Fu is like when you know somebody really well. It's like uh. Lao J or something. Yeah. Like whatever Chinese. Old, old, old Frank. <laughs> old Frank, yeah. Old Frank. I mean, it does, it's not emphasizing the old part. <laughs> it's emphasizing the sense <laughs> yeah, okay. of familiarity. Yeah, yeah, the relationship. So can I just call oh, you Lao Fu maybe yeah. during the interview? Whatever you prefer, yeah. that's no problem. It's so good to see you. <laughs> don't know, Frank went up. So there was a fire mm. in Chongqing, and where you live is also called Bei Bei. Bei Bei. <laughs> yeah, it's a I, small I'm, world. I have nothing to do with the fire. I didn't cause it. <laughs> There's a fire on, on a mountain, yeah. and, and Frank, uh, notably, I saw this on Twitter, actually. Mm. I saw this oh, on Twitter. Oh, Twitter, too? Yeah, right Right after it happened, this went viral in the United States also. Mm. And before I even knew that this was a big, that had gone viral in China, it had gone viral in the U.S. as well, Frank was on a motorbike carrying a chainsaw up a mountain <laughs> to go help fight the fire. <laughs> like, yeah. Frank is like, I've never imagined that I would become famous this it, way. It, 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 no, no. I, at least I'm, I'm glad to be famous for something <laughs> That's good. True. But no, it, uh, yeah. it was wildly unexpected. So could you tell us a just, little bit about, uh, firstly, uh, what were you doing on the mountain with the chainsaw? <laughs> How did this that doesn't sound sure. very good. <laughs> in sure. a good way. Yeah, so well, the 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 fires had uh, had started in the area, and then um, also other areas of Chongqing mm -hmm. too. Um, but uh, my my wife had told me they're they're really looking for people who have some chainsaw experience. They you know they've they've got all these chainsaws and not a lot of people to know how to use them safely. And uh, would you be willing to volunteer? I'm like, yeah, no problem. So, but I need a translator. Um. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So once they lined up a translator, I. I went with the whole group and I started helping out there with the the chainsaws. So, uh, do you want the whole spiel or? <laughs> yeah, actually we do. So yeah. when you when you oh, okay, about sure, how sure. many people were in the chainsaw group gang? <laughs> yeah, the, gang, the chainsaw gang. Sure, sure. Well, so things started first at a uh, like a main staging area. So they're getting all the supplies and materials together. There's like a mountain of you know mm. fire extinguishers and water and you know food packets and everything. Um, from there, uh, uh, finally we talked to the person in charge and told him, Hey, chainsaw, you know, this is the, one of the chainsaw people. So, <laughs> uh, me and there were a couple, other, a couple other locals who probably even had more chainsaw experience than I did. The three of us assembled a few outside and then, uh, then we started organizing groups inside to mass, you know, assemble these things, mm. you know, factory style. <laughs> um, and then we were doing all the safety checks to make sure it's assembled properly, all the pieces in the right spot, the the chain tension is correct, and then doing the gas oil mixture, oil, starting them up, making sure everything's ready for use. Um, no, know, I, I was just, yeah. so chainsaws, like when you hear fire, uh, mountain fire, the first thing you think of is either water, firefighters, oh, sure. <laughs> or fire extinguishers, yeah. as you mentioned, but like chainsaws, like, so, you, so it's used for cutting, well, like uh, cutting trees down for safety 
belt, I suppose. Yeah, well, so, so they you have to stay away away uh, uh, ahead of the fire because see, it, it just keeps burning and burning and burning. Mm. So uh, the idea is to kind of cut it. It's, it's usually called a fire line, fire but line. Uh, think of like a, a path through the forest where the fire can't mm. jump. Um, so part of that is well, you might be literally chainsawing down trees. Mm. Or if trees have fallen into roads, you need to help clear those as oh. well. So they'd probably be using them for both purposes. Um, and also I read in some news reports that you actually packed for like three days. Um, like even a uh, I don't know if it, well, it, it could have lasted maybe. No, they, no, it, it wasn't quite that much. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I figured it might be a night or two though. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I, I had some clothes and some water. I just, I didn't know what kind of supplies they'd have, first aid kit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but yeah, I... I really expected to probably be up there a day or two. So you for weren't sure. just um, delivering a chainsaw and then coming back. You were actually <laughs> planning on uh, Yeah, helping. no. I, I didn't know how my day would start. I, I thought it might be you get at the mountain and there you go. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, we, we actually spent most of the day assembling these chainsaws before even going anywhere. Um but yeah, I figured I, I might be straight up the mountain and, you know, not seeing, you know, home for several See, this days. Is Who what knows? Yeah. Heroic means. Yeah. Well, you don't well, even yeah, know I, exactly oh, what you're well. <laughs> you're going into. No, no. well, yeah. I, yeah. I have a question. How, about approximately yeah. how far were you from the actual fire? Uh let's see. Hard hard to say. I I mean probably I don't know, a, a kilometer, really or, kilometer or two. Wow. I don't know. Mm. I, I don't. I don't know. So <laughs> I'm not really sure. It, it, coming off of the mountain. I, it depends which way the the wind's mm. blowing, but but yeah, it was possible. Uh, I was kind of the, as far as I got, was the final checkpoint before they send you up on the paths mm. into the final forest part. Um, but yeah, I mean it it it, it, it depending too. Like uh, you know, the wind's blowing, the fire shoots this way, and they move everybody mm. out. Or I think you. I've, I certainly saw pictures of it, but uh, just didn't quite get into it myself. You know, you could see it from the street oh. and where I was, it was kind of blocked by, you know, more trees and mountain. You couldn't quite see the one spot from where I was yeah. at. Um, and I heard that you are actually, f well, I won't say familiar, but you've been through um, fires before. Like if you're from California, we always- from, uh, know, They've been around. Uh, we've had, had some small ones in Virginia. Oh. Uh, not not first. I mean, you, you see them, but not like not we want volunteers to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they typically in the U.S. they don't pull a lot of civilian volunteers to to get into that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. uh, um, but here, like maybe in California, so where it's more what, widespread, what but not Virginia at least. Yeah, experience with chainsaws back home. <laughs> that chainsaw. You are familiar enough to teach other people how to use them. Sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, so. I was uh I, I was pretty handy back uh, back in the day. I, I had my own tools and all. Um, but my my father was uh, in uh, construction, usually hospital construction. Oh, wow. um, and my my grandfather ran like a whole building company back in the day in New York. Uh, so I, I've been around it my whole life. Um, a few states we lived in. My dad would even cut firewood. Mm. So uh, with a chainsaw, um, we had a wood stove in a couple states. And then uh, um, I had gotten my own. Uh, I don't. I, I I guess at this point it'd probably be more than a decade at least. <laughs> um, I'd gotten my own chainsaw and uh, I'd used it to cut down a few trees on my property. And then uh, there was a big uh, big storm that knocked down several large trees in our uh. big neighborhood, but it blocked a lot of the walking paths. And after a day or two of that, I was like, enough's enough. I just brought it out and cleared paths for the neighborhood just to volunteer on that. Nobody asked me to do it. Was and, it surprising yeah, for just... your like neighbors here in Chongqing or your coworkers? Mm. Because, you know, when we think of people here, if they've never been to the U.S., when they think of the U.S., they think of like New York City or, you know, Las Vegas, fancy places. And they like, you don't need chainsaws <laughs> <laughs> in the States. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah. How come you know how to use this and you can even like assemble them? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people who, you know, do grow up in, you know, purely urban environments mm. or most of China, too, you, you're not familiar with tools unless that's your trade. Um, so I've noticed that. I, I did bring a few tools, but boy, I had to give up so many tools. Oh, wow. <laughs> but uh, um, but yeah, just I, I knew there wasn't a lot of need. I, I just brought some of the bait, like a toolbox uh, and some wrenches and stuff, just basics that, you know, they've actually come in handy more, more often than you when think, did you originally, but, uh, but no when power did you tools. Originally come to California, oh, sorry, to China. When did you originally come to China? Yeah, I'm interested in that. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, 2008 was my first and time. Was at that time um, you gave I up was all still a tools. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, oh no, <laughs> no. I at that time I had not expected to fully be moving to China. Um, Did you come here? For I, the I had a professor. <laughs> No, uh, no, I was here when the Olympics were oh, happening, cool. but uh, uh, I was in Beijing about three months before the Olympics happened, uh -huh. but uh, I did see them in China on TV, at mm -hmm. least uh, in Chengdu. Nice. Um, but no, I, I had a professor, um, uh, Dwight Allen, who is fairly famous as well, mm -hmm. um, but uh, he's, he'd been to China more than 80 times. Wow. It was wild, but he said, uh, hey, if you're serious about wanting to go to China, let me know. And sure enough, I, I did, and he set it up. And uh, I came. It was actually an earthquake, oh, <laughs> so the uh, Wenchuan earthquake oh, uh, right. when I came to China. Wait, did, you, did you originally yeah, so, move to Chongqing? Is that where you, you started in China? Uh, no. Uh, so uh, Chengdu, uh, where my wife's from, um, uh, I came in 2008. Um, hadn't visited Chongqing at all at that time. Um, I had met a few uh, Chongqing, actually professors from Southwest at my former university. They were coming as visiting scholars mm -hmm. and... Uh, um, I just would, in, you know, hey, let's go catch lunch or you want to come to my class. You know, they didn't always have a lot going on. And, hey, do you want to have dinner over at my house? My wife's Chinese, too, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And um, so we just kind of got along and they're like, hey, if you're ever in China, please come back to Chongqing and visit our university. And um, had an opportunity in 2017 on sabbatical and I dropped in and they're like, you know, it's like, oh, it's, it's you guys. You're back. <laughs> and it's, they're so happy to see me. And um 2018, uh, I was able to teach uh, the fall semester here physically and online back in the mm -hmm. U.S. I was still under contract in the U.S. too. Um, and then 2019, came full-time, signed signed up, and I'm part of the faculty. And your wife is Chinese, right? When, when... Uh, yeah, she's, she, yeah, when did you losing meet? your audio a little bit, but... Um, when oh, did you meet your uh, wife? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I met her in Chengdu in 2008, um, about a month after I'd been there. Um, but she was working for the government at the mm -hmm. time. But, uh, um, but yeah, we kind of hit oh, it off cool. and eventually... Well, actually, I wanted to get back to the <laughs> sure. fire. Oh, okay. So how, it, what is the situation? Is the fire completely out now? This was a few weeks ago, right? So it's completely... Yeah, yeah. So no, the fire is completely out now. Mm -hmm. um, I think they've pretty much clean, finished the cleanup process. Um, I know there's been a big... Uh, call around the community they want to do a big tree planting mm. as oh, well to, just to get it back even quicker wow. um oh. but yeah so that should be kind of a cool thing happening so this fall you mentioned that you're from several states could you tell us about where you're from the like the big sure story? sure <laughs> Oh, sure. Yeah. So like, like I said, my, my uh, father was with a construction company that did a lot of major hospitals around the country. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was born in Fulton, Missouri, and then moved to Massachusetts, Minnesota, Hawaii, wow. Virginia, oh. and then finally Georgia on my own there. So yeah. you, you mentioned last night when we were talking before the show that you think one of these is more home than any other. Which one is that and why? I'd probably go with Virginia. Um, my parents kind of wanted to settle down in Virginia. They they just kind of fell in love with it when they when they moved there. Um, you know, we even the whole time we were in Virginia, we kept expecting it. We looked at Texas and some <laughs> other places, and then finally, like, okay, we're just gonna stay. Um, and yeah, so they've they've settled down there. Um, I have a younger brother. Uh, he lives in Yorktown, um, but uh, but yeah, they're still in Fishersville, which is a small town, but. Charlottesville and Harrisonburg, if you've heard of either yeah, of those, yeah. or Stanton. Absolutely, yeah, right I've heard there. of them, all of them. Yeah. So, <laughs> I've never actually yeah, been to yeah. Virginia, but I've heard of them in movies and in conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a it's a beautiful place. You know, it's got it's got mountains just like here. Uh, um, you know, maybe even more so on the mountains. So, oh, wow, um, mountains. Very popular place to visit. But during during yeah. your time in the United States, uh, did you see major forest fires in any of these areas? Yeah, we we had some in the uh, the hills uh, uh, occasionally. Yeah, um, not exactly. not every year like California, <laughs> but uh, um, but yeah, we, yeah, it's it. We when there's a lot of dry dry times, like I mean, that's what happened mm -hmm. here too. It's just you don't get enough rainfall, and then you know a fire sparks off, and you know it just you know keeps going. So yeah, uh, but yeah, we we lost some good chunks of forest for mm. for a few of the areas around there, but. Uh, 
Um, but yeah, it's, it bounces back. Usually after a year or two, you, you almost don't even notice. It just you know, greens up so quickly. The same thing happens in California. So, you yeah. probably, you've heard of it. Not just one year. Every single summer, there's a series of fires where I'm from in California. And, and actually, my grandmother's from a place called Paradise in, in California. And Paradise burned down recently. Oh, no. <laughs> the, the whole town, the whole surrounding area. Oh, no. You know, wow. What's really surprising to me is it looks now almost like it did before the fire because they replanted and like they rebuilt the town with insurance money mm. and basically paradise has already been like basically rebuilt. California just goes through these waves where there's a dry season, there's droughts and then some part of California burns down like a, it's like a annual fire season. Oh. But that's still like is there any are there yeah. any way to prevent it? Well, if you in know the past, that is so there likely. have been different administrations that have done these, what did you say, fire lines, where they clear parts of forests. Mm -hmm. But you, it, that doesn't prevent it mm, because yeah. there can still be brush everywhere, and it's difficult. California is a very large place. Mm. And so with, with droughts, the whole entire Midwest has been affected by droughts for years lately. Uh, it's just not moist enough, and fires just continually break out. You know, but I, mm. I remember seeing this on the news since, since I was a child. It just seems like the whole state is kind of fire prone. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's every Let's year talk about it happy seems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like fire can be. You oh know, sure, it sure. can break sure. out almost any time, especially mm. during the dry seasons. Mm. Um, mm. I'm interested in knowing more about you know mm. your life in Chongqing. Is that okay? Absolutely, can we ask? Absolutely. Yeah, Ashley, just see if we can recognize, sure, sure. Uh, recognize this. Tefan Do you? Does that sound familiar to you? Oh. Uh, it's yeah. something about uh, eating, yeah, I think maybe. That's, um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's did, did you eat or not? Maybe is that uh, like, lo local oh, okay. Chongqing dialect? Do, does that sound familiar oh, well, to you? Trifanla. I, I could hear that. Yeah, eat, it's something eat, about eating. Yeah. Yeah, um, you should probably um, probably hear that more too. Yeah. Yeah. Made that. It's like, have you or hmm. yeah I've or have that, you yeah. eaten or not? Because hmm. like in Mandarin, oh. in Mandarin Chinese, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you eaten yet? But Chongqing dialect, it's very. Um, very flavorful. This is one where I think of when I think of Chongqing, Chongqing Hua. It's <laughs> it's very juicy and it's musical. Hmm. It's like when people speak that dialect, it's like they all have great stories to tell just from the sound of the dialect. It flows up and down, up and down, like the terrain. But I guess you have not really heard of it. I've not, I've not been to Chongqing, so. Yeah, but I, I, I love it. I love people telling stories in the Chongqing dialect. They just sound like they have so much spirit. Just the so, language Yeah, why itself. don't you tell us a little bit about why you chose Chongqing? You say your wife is from Chengdu, mm. and you end up in Chongqing. So what is great about Chongqing, I guess? Sure. Well, um, the, the university is is really what drew me here as well. Um, it's a great city, certainly. Um I'd spent a lot more time in Chengdu initially, um, about a year and a half or so, and then I guess three months way back in the day. But uh, um, yeah, it, uh, it, it just seemed like a really good fit. You know, there were some really good mm -hmm. programs for me at the university. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm teaching education. I'm not, you know, teaching English. You know, mm -hmm. it's not, not my area. It's education. So um, that's exciting. You know, I'm involved with the PhD programs here. Um, so I, I I really thought that was neat that it was English taught. Unfortunately, my Chinese is <laughs> you know just just you know, tough, Indian, yeah. you know Mama Hu, just only speak a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, and again you know I, I if I if I knew long you know at the beginning hey I'm going to move to China when I'm you know <laughs> at this point in my life I would have really focused on learning the language. But, but, you, but your uh, daughter will help um, later. So mm -hmm. but no, uh, it's just a good fit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, my wife's already very excited about the yeah. prospect of her you'll, you'll translator. You'll learn from your daughter. You'll learn Chinese from so, your yeah. daughter. That's going to be fun. Yeah. 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 So is she uh, about five and a half now? Chinese yeah. At school, yeah. She'll be. Um, you are learning along with her. Yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh not so much. Uh, we we mm. we're mostly speaking English at home um, mm. because right. she only gets Chinese at school. So. Uh, but right now she's pretty much fluent in both languages. I mean, but Chinese was her first language. She mm. came when she was ten months old and oh. hadn't oh, returned okay. since. So. Five years, over five um, years. Yeah. Um, how um, do you find it difficult adapting to the local culture? Um. Um, off and on. I mean, uh, I've, I've got enough survival mm -hmm. Chinese that life's okay. You know, it's, uh, I can, I can order food or ask questions <laughs> or even mm -hmm. give directions to a cab driver and things like that. Um, so, uh, no, it's, it's, it's good. I mean, the language barrier mm. definitely makes things challenging, but it's, it's not getting worse anyway. It's, it's getting better and better. So, uh, 
Um, but yeah, as far as, you know, finding, you know, what foods are, you know, I enjoy and things, you know, it's, it's, it's good. I know where the good restaurants are now well, and can ask you we're finding new ones all the time. And where you are from uh, is very famous for spicy sure, noodles sure. and spicy hot pot. Hot pot yeah. So are you, are you, there's are you, definitely some spicy are you stuff. Into the yeah. Spicy Chongqing hot pot? Um, I do it kind of on occasion. I, you know, I, I, I will do a hot pot night once in a while. I, I, I'm not local enough where I could do five days in a row of hot pot and and truly enjoy it. Um, but no, once in a while, it's, it's certainly it's scary, it's good. Uh, I've been yeah, to I, Chongqing <laughs> just briefly for like uh, for work before, and of course, you you know, you head to one of those uh, hot pot places, and they have these um, huge hot pots divided into at least like nine sections. I mean, it looks red, right? With yeah. heaps of uh, chili peppers and those numbing oh, sure. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. peppers. Yeah, if you just look at it, you feel like oh, I the can't do this. Yeah, yeah. But we chose like the milder mm. uh, soup base. And when we tried it, it was actually fully acceptable, like spiciness-wise. Like, and it was oh, this, very this flavorful. This from Beijing. Give her the... The <laughs> mild one. It still looks scary. There are all kinds of chili peppers. Oh, yeah. But you, you can even order yeah. the, the but, clear where it's not even red. So, yeah, they, the they have different waiters types. Waiters and waiters so, yeah, look down yeah. upon you. And they're like, that's where <laughs> No spiciness at all? I, <laughs> no, I, I, I think as long as you're paying the but bill, turned, you're probably okay. It was okay, actually but. surprisingly good. <laughs> yeah, so don't worry. I think you I'm, can handle I want to try the really spicy one. Yeah, I'm, um, I don't want to try it here in Beijing. I want to wait until I go visit. Go to Yeah, yeah, that would be. There nice. you go. Yeah, do that. We'll, we'll get one. We'll do, we'll do half and half. I'll let you do the, the really spicy, and I'll just yeah, I'll take it a little to, easier to myself. Line up but, sure. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I do see and, a lot of them do that. I yeah, saw, that helps. Um, but in a news report yeah. that I think after after the fire broke out, you actually sent out um, like safety tips. Mm. Um, was it on WeChat friend? Well, uh, friend circle that you did. Oh, no. So it was just uh, WeChat. We oh. have a large uh, faculty group. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's like maybe 150 of us in there um, and they all have families and friends and whatnot. But yeah, the uh, the smoke was it was a windy night when it kind of started, which is also spreading the fire. But uh, the smoke was literally mm -hmm. blowing into our apartment on campus. Um, and mm -hmm. my wife's getting a little freaked out about that. Um, and as are all her friends, we're like, do you know anything to do? I'm like, well, mm -hmm. you can do this and this and this. And, you know, finally, after a little while, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to write it all out for everybody. And so I just kind of gave them some pointers, you know, just I was like blocking off my windows and taping oh. some plastic over the fans. So, I mean, it, it really was a pretty heavy smoke coming in. Um, but, you know, like pulling your clothes. Uh, they were it, originally they were showing in the first videos of the fire, like, there was, it looked like a power substation nearby. And I'm like, well, if it hits that, we're going to lose power to the whole area. Um, so I was like, well, if we lose power, you know, make, make sure you're char you know, charge your phones now, get, find your flashlights, you know, were your wife some, looking some at you with to, admiration? You know, like, how do you know all this, oh, yeah. Frank? You know what to do <laughs> yeah. in dangerous times like this. Well, we, <laughs> I feel so safe with you. Well, we, we've been married long enough. She, she, she knows I, 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 I do try I to be prepared for a few I, things I, I here and there. So, the uh, that yeah. You even yeah. wrote, like, take all your laundries inside. I was like, wow, he does like, you know, house yeah. chores and all that. <laughs> well, <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, it's just, you know, with all the smoke yeah. outside, it's just going to go into your clothes. So it's like, you know do yourself that, right? a favor for so bringing them in. Most people <laughs> you know? dry their laundry outside. On balconies. On balconies and, balconies, yeah. and stuff. Because in the States, people are like, why do you yeah. bring your clothes <laughs> That's been an adjustment. Use, yeah. Like, most yeah. people don't use dryers here. You know, it's we just environmentally bought, friendly. We just got a uh, washer dryer. So oh, I can actually dry it. my clothes with the machine now for the first time in Oh, nice, nice. But the sun, the sun is free. And it it but kills it comes the out bacteria fluffy and warm. It's like you can, in the in, in the winter you can put on like a dry oh, a dryer, dry sheet. dryer sheets, man. So oh, so nice. fabric okay, softener. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And also, I want to ask you about like connecting with the people locally. Um, have you been able to make a lot of friends? And oh, sure. Do you, you feel something special about the local people, local Chongqing? Yeah. People? Sure, sure. Well, we, we yeah, we we do have a uh, mm. a lot of locals we interact with. I'm I'm not one of those expats <laughs> who only talks to foreigners. Uh, um, so yeah, well, I mean it it happens though. It's easy to get in your circles, even in the U.S. There's right. there's chunks of Chinese yeah, folks who true. only talk to Chinese folks, you know. So it happens. But um, but yeah, here in uh, Bay Bay, there's there's not as many foreigners, especially since COVID happened. But I I know most of the ones who are here. But we hang out once in a while. But uh, I have a lot of colleagues who are you know Chinese and. Um, so a lot of them even have kids the, mm. the same age as ours or similar. Yeah. So we let them hang out a lot. Um, I had kind of started uh, 
a, a private STEAM classroom as well. So we met a lot of families through there. Um, so we've had a lot of, you know, a lot of folks we we hang out with, or you know, I, I know their kids, or their kids know our kids. kids. Uh, um, plus, you know, our daughter here is That's here on like campus. The, so, um, yeah, kids are a big exactly. uh, a it's big like door opener like, there. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want to say like when they get dogs, but similar. Yeah, actually, you know, when you yeah, get I've a dog, that where you start talking friends. to people. <laughs> yeah, <their dogs>, <laughs> take them to the dog park. Yeah, I mean, the kid park. The kids. Yeah. Even for yeah. like even for a hermit like sure, me, like sure. I don't usually yeah. go out much, but. Our kids have to go out, mm. and then you go to the park and you you talk to parents, and yeah, then you absolutely. know you find out all sorts of information. It's actually mm. very helpful, mm. but yeah, that's when you really branch out, <laughs> really start socializing with the locals. Well, can I yeah. Oh yeah, ask a little bit about where else in China you visited and seen, and maybe mm. even lived. Sure, sure. Um, so the the place I've spent the most time out, other than Chongqing, mm. would be uh, Chengdu. So uh, we lived there for maybe about a year and a half, all combined. You know, maybe maybe almost two ish, mm -hmm. probably about <laughs> somewhere there. Um, but uh, let's see, I I visited Beijing in two thousand eight, and just very briefly in twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, we were doing a spring festival, and kind of COVID hit, and uh, it was eleven oh. of us in a Beijing apartment. And uh, my wife goes, "Do you want to take uh, Dagny back to the U.S.?" So uh, like, yeah, let's do that. So I hadn't even planned to visit, and uh, glad I did because mm -hmm. I got one of the last flights out mm -hmm. and one of the last flights back. So. Really so glad because, right. I mean, who knew it would be this long? Um, but uh, let's see, mm -hmm. uh, parts Ooh, in Yunnan, like nice. Kuiming, Dali, Sichuan Bana. Um, let's see, uh, Guilin, I think it went there. Wow. Shanghai, really have uh, a few places a in Sanya, no, like uh, Haiko, <laughs> Hainan, <laughs> yeah. Uh, a I few, know. yeah. Well, it, the, the know, wife's pretty yeah. smart it's about it. Like, you should go here, Bana. yeah. Like, big cities, too. Uh, I know, so nice what would you choices. Say? What were some yeah. Yeah. Um, Would Macau, you Hong Kong. Give yeah. us a ranking, one or two. They don't have to be the best, two, but one or two really amazing places that you've been mm. that you consider, I want. I really liked that. Sure. Uh, let's see. Um, again, back it was 2008. Mm. The Great Wall really did live up to the hype for me mm. in Beijing. So that was cool. Um, and I was, again, we were hoping to go visit it when we were last up there, but mm. I, I do want to go visit the Great Wall again. Um you know, mm -hmm. Forbidden City was cool too, but Which part of the Great Wall, Wall just really lived up to the hype for me. Like, whoa, yeah, this is cool. Yeah, yeah, Badalong. Uh, I think it was yeah, yeah, yeah. Badalong. Well, when you come if back, if I pronounce that right, come with yeah, me. Let's but, go to uh, Simatai. I think it's a lot better. Ooh, it's the it's got the most vertical. That'd be awesome. Peaks, yeah, so I'll let you know. If you up, up for trying to hike up those stairs, cool. it's actually cool. really intense. <laughs> I, I we can do the whole day. Yeah, we'll pack a picnic okay, or something. I'm gonna That'd say no to that, but yeah. sure. <laughs> um, actually, sure, sure. Really far north than you um, I'm a little closer, wall, yeah. but yeah, I think I'll be like carrying ten hamburgers. If you're talking about like a day of hiking, <laughs> I get hungry really. I burn off energy like crazy. <laughs> so. But go on, please. Stop. Oh sure, it's fascinating. Yeah. Um. Again, a kind of another old one. Again, it was probably my first time in China. Um, but mm -hmm. Hong Kong was kind of a shock just because it was like going to a whole different country even after being in mainland China for three months. At that point, it was like, whoa, whoa, mm -hmm. <laughs> everybody speaks English. And uh, you know, they're driving <laughs> on the wrong side of the road. Really you know, that kind of thing. But, but yeah. The, but The left side yeah. confused me. I was like, wait, wait, I didn't even know this was a thing. But I guess because they're a former British colony, mm -hmm. they set it up that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What about Yunnan? Yeah, very, very British in that I'm regard. Um, about yeah, I'd say uh, as far as um, it, there was some chicken in uh, Sichuan Bana. I don't what? know how the heck they grilled it. That's some of the best chicken I've had. I mean, it was just crazy. So, uh, but as far as as far as sights, yeah, uh, yeah. Dali was pretty awesome. Um, you know, it, it's I mean, it, the main city is kind of like a big touristy ancient town, but it was still pretty cool. But we did uh, mm -hmm. some hikes in the mountains nearby too, so I kind of lumped that together. Come up a lot. Doing that. You know, with <laughs> uh, I, think, I think it's an American past. They're like, out. They're most out. Yeah. Americans like going hiking, going That's camping. True. It's like a very American thing. Yeah. Hiking is like work. Yeah. Kind of I mean, raised on that as a kid too. <laughs> yeah. It's nice. It's I know. Chill. It's like getting back into nature. <laughs> can I feel like decompressed and all of the my city woes are taken off of me, kind of. That's true. But have you been to Yunnan? Jason? I haven't been to you. you have, oh, yeah, you, well, a... you'll definitely go one day. Oh, yeah. geez. Yeah, you need to get and out. My wife yeah, has been geez. many times. And I, I, I'm always just busy with work. And he, but he has been to Hainan. And no, he loves it. I haven't it. been to Hainan. No, no, no. Sanya, you've been to Oh, Sanya. okay. We yeah. yeah. You were going to. Oh, oh we didn't go because 
It's just dif- traveling around is a little difficult right now. Okay. Well, it's the extra challenges. Yeah, well, good you actually, didn't go this year. I heard year. that yeah. right when we yeah. were going, yeah. planning to go, when we didn't go, that there was a lockdown. And I was like, oh, I should have gone because then it'd be locked down on a paradise island. <laughs> it's better no, than you locked in. <laughs> you, you, well, you'd just be in a hotel the home. whole time. Yeah, that's oh, no, too bad. They're yeah. not going to lock you on the beach. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, so you have decided essentially that you and your family are going to stay in China. Is this like a, an indefinite kind of move? Are you going to retire here? Yeah, yeah. I uh, it's it's very possible, very likely. Um, you know, I mean it it's I, I think as long as I can get all the conveniences I need, and I'm usually mm-hmm. a pretty simple guy to be honest. It's like uh um, you know, I'm I'm pretty happy well, as long as my happy my your, family's here. You say you have and, a brother, they're happy. So and he lives in yeah. Virginia. So how does how does your family back home in the States yeah, feel about yeah. your decision to stay here in China? Uh, I mean, it was a shock at first, but I mean, our, our parents had always kind of raised us to be independent. I mean, it was like, you know, at 18, you, really? you move out or you so, pay rent kind of thing. So it's know? real. I mean, not to be <laughs> ugly, but, you know, no no <laughs> failure to launch stuff with my family. My but, yeah. Like, so time, Jason. It's Seriously? Uh, it, yeah. Well, because we kind of, um, oh, yeah. in, in yeah. China, people kind of joke about it. Um, but I guess for some families, it's it's real. Oh, yeah. They were like, you need to go. Like, Go find an apartment. Really? Because oh, yeah, for like for yeah, yeah. like say my family, um, like my parents are always ready to. They won't think of it as take me taking me back, but just like coming back together. Mm-hmm. You know, that, for the them thing. that's like the natural. They, thing. Oh yeah, come yeah. Often, and it mm-hmm. wouldn't be a big deal if mm-hmm. they moved in someday. I think it's an American thing that. They want to see you go out and make your own path and establish yourself as an adult. I, that's what my perspective is. Do you have a similar yeah, feeling? Yeah, uh, entirely the same. Yeah, I feel like was, my mom yeah. is hoping for me to fail so that <laughs> I'll go home. <laughs> oh, <laughs> very different mindset. Very different She's mindset. Like, you're, yeah. you're too independent. <laughs> Come back to me. <laughs> yeah, but it's something I think my mom needs to you know, get used to a little bit more. Well, but. can we talk about the attention? Because we're not the only ones to interview. Oh, sure. Mm. You've been interviewed by other there have been a few. <laughs> so how, yeah. how do you yeah. feel about all the attention that you're getting from media? Uh, you know, it's 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 okay. I, I mean, it's it's in a very positive way, too. So it's not like, oh, you did something horrible. Right. <laughs> Talk to the reporters kind of thing, you know. But but no, so I mean, it, it, it's in a very positive light. So I mean, I, I, I'm accepting of that. Um, you know, it's it's been a little overwhelming, but uh, it's okay. Yeah, um, it's 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 dying down now, which is it's a good thing. It's time to get back to normal, I think. But uh, I want to ask um, you about yeah. something uh, you said in a report. Um, they were kind of surprised that you came out to help, and uh, but you said very naturally that you know it, something like I'm translating from from Chinese back something like I pay sure, um, sure. the social security here or I'm getting the social oh. security here. Oh, in that Chongqing. one. No, I feel I, like I, you know I'm part of uh, Chongqing. Yeah, well, uh, community. Yeah, well, I mean, I uh, yeah, I I think my wife might have mentioned the social security part, but uh, <laughs> um, but no, I do I do have social security, but no, I mean, I, this is my home, mm-hmm. and I mean. People needed somebody who could do that. So, I mean, yeah, why not? I mean, why, why wouldn't I? I found I? that I mean, to be very you know, touching, just... actually, because you really consider yourself oh, part sure. of the, the community. And the sense of community is very important to people in China. I mean, like, we don't really think about it a lot because it's just part of our existence. You know, you're, um, you have yourself and your family and then you're part of a community and, you know, of course bigger range mm-hmm. than that um and there's always the sense that you're part of something bigger and also something else you said about teaching how um you feel like uh, I'm, I'm not too sure if it's, these are the exact words that your students make you feel like you're back home you know when you go teach they have that help give you that sense of oh home. yeah oh yeah well yeah i do enjoy my students yeah whether they're children or adults mm-hmm. or you know teachers or university students or what have you uh you know i i really do i do get a lot of energy off of teaching i i chose the right profession that's good <laughs> so, or else yeah, it would be very yeah, very difficult yeah. um yeah well i mean some people do just do it for the wrong reasons too but no i i really do enjoy it and i mean it it keeps me busy but, <laughs> but uh it's good it's good about, uh, or something different about teaching chinese students do you see something different from um your students in china do they give you a different kind of energy? Or? Um. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, I've I've always enjoyed my students, regardless of uh, who they are. I mean, uh, um, you know, I'd say here in China, maybe the university students, uh, uh, especially the PhD students. It's it's been kind of cool because 
these are people just really trying to better their lives and here to learn. Mm -hmm. They're not just here because they're expected to go to you know, university or college, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they're here to really change their lives and even possibly change lives back in the, back in their home countries. Mm -hmm. So.